All right, welcome to the first lesson of the Comprehensive Prompt Engineering course. We're going to dive into the world of prompt engineering to see what it's all about, and we'll start with the basics. What a prompt is, what prompt engineering entails, how it's used in language models, and why it's important. We'll also explore the difference between broad and detailed prompts, or bad and good ones, and I'll quickly mention a thing or two about prompt evaluation. So let's get right into it. What is a prompt exactly? A prompt is a statement or a set of questions that you give to a language model as a starting point for its output. In other words, it's the what that you want the model to generate, or even simpler than that, it's what you type in for the language model. So having this in mind, what is prompt engineering? It's the process of designing, evaluating, refining, modifying, and optimizing prompts to get the best results from the language model. The goal is to provide the model with the right information in the right format so that it can generate the most accurate and relevant output possible. So your job as a prompt engineer would be to steer the language model in a desired direction and to influence its responses in order to get the output you or your client is looking for. Now before I talk about different types of language models, I just want to say something real quick. Looking at smartphones, for example, nobody needs to know how they're built or how they work in order to use them. However, different models have different features and functions, which is something that might be relevant to many of us. The same goes for language models and prompt engineering. By simply being aware that different types of language models exist can make a lot of difference in the responses that you get. So let's start with ChatGPT, which is a general language model. It is trained on a broad range of text and can generate a wide range of responses. These types of language models are typically used for general applications such as chatbots and virtual assistants, and ChatGPT can therefore generate text, answer questions, translate languages, and do much more. However, if you're, let's say, in the healthcare industry, then a much better suited type of model would be a specialized language model. These are trained on specific domains and are used to generate responses within those domains, and are typically used for specialized applications like healthcare. So, a healthcare language model that is trained on medical literature can, for example, generate medical summaries and diagnose illnesses. And the third type is the control generation model. These are trained to generate text that conforms to specific constraints, such as tone, style, or structure, and are used for creative writing, poetry, and other applications that require specific text characteristics. For example, a poetry language model trained on classical poems can generate new poems in the same style. So you see guys, you don't have to know how it works in order to create killer prompts, but simply understanding that different types are better for specific situations is definitely something you should be aware of. Now as we touched on previously, language models are used in a wide range of applications and they can be used as chatbots, virtual assistants, even medical assistants, and so on. In any case, the quality of the model's output is heavily influenced by the quality of the prompt it was trained on. So, inputting a well-designed and detailed prompt is crucial for language models, because it sets the context and objective for the output, and it can also help ensure that the model generates accurate, relevant, and useful responses. A clear prompt helps the model understand the desired content, tone, and style, and also makes it easier to evaluate and refine the language model's performance, ensuring it continues to improve over time. On the other hand, poorly designed prompts don't provide enough information for the language model to generate an accurate and relevant response, which can lead to confusion, misinformation, and poor results. So let's take a look at some examples so you can get a picture of what a bad and prompt looks like. Now I've gone ahead and type the examples into ChatGPT because I didn't want to waste your time waiting for it to type the responses out. Here's the first example. And even though Chat gave us an extensive response that could most probably be used in certain scenarios, this is still an example of a bad prompt because it doesn't provide enough information for the language model to generate an accurate and relevant response. We didn't specify the length of the essay, the exact topic, because psychology is fairly broad, neither the structure nor style. So for this prompt, a language model might give us an essay on a general topic in psychology, such as the definition, and many other things apparently, but without any specific focus or structure. Now this here is a much better prompt because it provides more information for the language model to work with. Here you can see 
we got a much longer response from chat. And we've specified the type of essay we want, the size of it, as well as the specific topic. And this kind of prompt will provide us with a much more accurate and relevant response. And even after evaluating the response, if you see there are bits and pieces missing that you'd like to add to the essay that would make it even more complete, then simply go back and modify the prompt by adding those things into it. And the same would go if you were to notice something you think is redundant. So to show you what I mean, here is an example of an even better prompt. It's better because we've added more details to it, therefore our response will be more accurate and relevant. This prompt will generate us an essay that provides a detailed analysis of the effects of social media on mental health, including a comprehensive overview of three peer-reviewed studies, and you can even ask it to give you its conclusion. Now, I didn't type this last example in because there's no way to show you the difference between that one and the previous one without wasting too much time. However, I encourage you to do this yourself so you can get a feel for the difference in the outputs you can get in real time. Okay, so even though there is a lesson specifically dedicated to this topic, I will say here that evaluating the performance of the language model is the first step in improving your prompts. If you want to evaluate the effectiveness of a prompt, you need to measure its impact on the generated output. Basically, prompt evaluation begins with response evaluation. The goal here is to assess the quality of the output in order to find ways you can improve your prompt so you can get an even better response. So some of the key questions to ask yourself when, when evaluating prompts are, does the output respond to the prompt in a relevant and meaningful way? Is the output accurate and free of errors? Is the output coherent and easy to read? And finally, does the output match the desired style and tone? Okay, so to quickly recap guys, in this lesson you've learned what a prompt is, what prompt engineering means, what, why prompt design is important, the difference between a bad and a good detailed prompt, as well as about differences of language models and how different ones could suit your needs better. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll discuss the future of language models and the potential that they hold.